uh, and I'm here to talk about Grafana, some history, some current state, and a little bit about the future. Uh, for those of you who don't know Grafana, I click this on tour. Uh, da, 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 da. Why is that? Okay, nice. Uh, Grafana is a dashboarding tool uh, for visualizing time series data. It's not a database uh, and it's not a collector, so it only visualizes data. And in the uh, latest release, we also alert on data. I'm not sure if the lighting is. Uh... Oh, okay. This is going to be fun. Um, so yeah, uh, the most common use cases for Grafana are um, visualizing home automation in uh, uh, visualizing metric in home automation application metrics uh, as what is users doing, not what is the service doing. Uh, Internet of Things, uh, industrial sensors, and also infrastructure monitoring. Uh, the intention of Grafana was not in infrastructure monitoring, but that's the most common use case by far. <laughs> uh, a small disclaimer, I was not a part of the project from day one, uh, but I worked with Torkil Ödegård, who is the creator of the project, uh, at the same company when he made this, and I joined kind of about a year after he, he decided to leave that company. So I can't take credit for everything. Uh, the reason we cre uh, he created Grafana was uh, that um, we didn't have any good metrics dashboard uh, at our former company. Uh, the, the, the former company's infrastructure started to look something like this. Uh, we had a process of splitting a big monolith into smaller services. I don't want to say microservices because uh, this was like five years ago. Um, so it wasn't made up yet. And also, there wasn't super, super tiny. Um, we had around 65 or 70 deployable units um, on a bunch of different servers, but there's nothing compared to the madness of today. Uh, anyway, to, to, gra to get an overview of the system once we had split it up so much was very, very hard, and the logs just didn't cut it anymore. Uh, we started using the Elk stack for logs, and we liked that for logs. But still, it's not possible to get the complete overview of what your users are doing right now. So we started using Graphite for user data, not anything regarding servers. Uh, we still, still had our proprietary monitoring system doing checks on all the servers. I don't want to mention the name of the <laughs> service, but um, that wasn't the main use case. User metrics was the main use case. So that's why we um, developed Grafana in a certain way in the future, uh, from the beginning. And the initial version of Grafana uh, was a front-end only application. It didn't have any backend. It was just a web application uh, asking for JSON dashboards from Elasticsearch. And when you save them, you just send the dashboard as a JSON blob to Elasticsearch, and that's it. Kind of simple uh, start, which was kind of uh, which was good because it got us starting rather than doing everything perfect. Uh, eventually, we got support for InfluxDB and OpenTSDB in uh, Grafana 1x, <coughs> and we started having more panels. We got uh, the single uh, stat panel and, uh, of course, the graph panel. That was the main parts of 1x. Uh, in 2x. Grafana got its own backend. I've written in Go, of course, because that's what you do. You write stuff in Go. Um, and we decided to use a relational model database to store all the dashboards instead. Uh, and the only reason for that was to make it really simple for people to get started. So by default, Grafana uses SQLite, but you can switch it to MySQL or Postgres or something like that. Um, we really wanted an easy start experience for new users. Grafana also got an API at this uh, age uh, for automate, uh, automation and so on. 
it got, uh, we introduced users, permissions, and so on. Uh, and this was also about when I decided to quit my former company and start working full time with Grafana, with Target. In Grafana 2X, we had uh, three new data sources, Prometheus, Elastic, and CloudWatch. And we also had a new panel called Table Panel. And uh, around this point, we started uh, thinking more and more, more about the plugin system. Because we had a um, rough plugin system in 1X for data sources, but now we kind of realized that we also needed plugin system for panels. And we also know that everyone was creating time series databases. Um, every startup strategy included time series databases at this point. And we also added, yeah, the coloring, amazing. Um, added support for mixed uh, panels, so you can have, um, you can mix uh, different data sources in one panel. And I, uh, we found this really useful when aggregate, uh, when one of you uh, infrastructure data with uh, user data and even business data, because they tended to uh, be stored in different uh, databases. So we had some uh, information in Elastic, some information in Graphite, and some uh, information in no, that was it. <laughs> uh, uh, in other system that we had custom built data sources for, and mixing them is really what was really important for us because it gives a much better overview uh, when you have them in the same graph rather than two panels side to side. Um, and uh, I will catch stuff that um, you, uh, you you can't just catch stuff without. Uh, it's so much easier to see stuff and find a problem rather than trying to find a problem by scrolling and comparing a panel side by side. In Grafana 3X. Um, Sorry, can you switch off the light? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, but we need them for we need them for the camera. So Grafana 3X. We have a separate feed for the slides. So anyway, Grafana 3X. Uh, we may uh, we rewrote a lot of the UX uh, to make it much 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 more prettier. Grafana 2X was kind of rough. We didn't really like the design and. UX is important for us because uh, having people adopt Grafana is one of the key strengths, uh, we think at least. Uh, compared to other dashboard tools, we think this is the most beautiful one and it's the easiest one to get started with. Uh, we know it's kind of rough in the edge at some time, but compared to others, it's still much easier and inclusive. Uh, we created a... <laughs> okay, stream's okay. No. Nice. Wait, wait, <laughs> <laughs> so we also created a companion site for Grafana called Grafana.net where you can host plugins and dashboards. Uh, so you can upload your data sources and you can upload panels and so on. And this was a major rewrite from our part because we had to stabilize the API for a long period uh, to enable the plugin system. It's unviewable without them. Uh, but, but there was no big feature release uh, for the end user uh, per se, but plugins should enable end users to do more stuff. We also created a CP, uh, CLI for managing the plugins. Uh, Plugins. And that was kind of enough history, I think. Uh, it was the major changes, and um, this is the current state of Grafana. So these numbers are uh, public on playgrafana.org. I don't think you can read that URL, uh, but it's in the slides later. Uh, and every day, uh, every Grafana server sends some statistics. 
about user count dashboards and so on. Uh, there's no sensitive information in that uh, call home feature. We're very, uh, it's very important for us that people can feel safe about using it. Um, but it gives us so much nice data, like versions and so on. So we can see new features um, taking, taking off or don't taking off or s stuff like that. So it's very important for us. Um, the graph panel is like the bread and butter of Grafana. I'm not going to go too deep to, into it, but I'm going to give you some uh, important highlights. So the graph panel is by default display, uh, displayed with lines, uh, but you can also display it uh, with uh, dots instead of lines if you find that useful, useful. I usually find this way too intrusive, but in some cases it's uh, much better because you can, because um, it's easier to locate the time um, stamp rather than with the lines. You can also use bars, and you, if you use bars, you might want to stack them, because otherwise the big bars will block the lower bars in some cases, depending on the serial name override. We also have a new feature for uh, displaying the series on the x-axis instead of time. Uh, so you can do bars on aggregate, so the series can, uh, you can calculate the total of each area and display like this. And whenever you create your dashboard, I think it's um, important that you try to fine-tune it to make it beautiful, because that will make uh, adoption much, much uh, likely. And two of my favorite ways of doing this is the series override. So in this example, uh, which so, uh, shows percentiles, I've changed the uh, uh, draw mode for the 95 percentile to use dots. Because the 95 percentile usually is very volatile, while the other percentiles are kind of steady. So using dots for the 95 percentile makes it less intrusive, but it's still there. Um, and the other one is if you have an average of something, you can also draw the mean and max and fill the gap between them. So you will see what the average is cal calculated by. Because sometimes the average will hide information for you, uh, depending on how uh, big the gap is. And this is a small and simple way of making sure you would catch that information as well. And you can do that by displaying series override in the display tab, uh, and then you specify uh, a name of a series or a regexp, and then you can apply overrides from the, the for, uh, from the settings you currently have in the panel. This is something I love to do because nice panels is so much, much, much better. Another caution about uh, the graph panel is uh, when people use legends. If you have mean, max, and average, and a query containing uh, aggregation like mean, then the mean will not be the raw mean. It will be the mean of the averages. And this is very common and, and confusing for because uh, people are expecting to see the real mean value. But that's never the case, because Grafana will only see the average value. Because I don't think there's any time series database that returns the average or me, uh, max value in the query for the series as well. That would be awesome, but uh, I don't think anyone does that. The other panel that's very common people use is uh, single stat. And you can use a few different settings for it. The default one, you can have a spark line to get some kind of sense about the graph in the background, and you can have the gorge. And you can also map a number value, a, a number range to a string. Uh, and that might make it very easy to uh, get, uh, get a feeling for what the status is. So in this case, you can map it to Unicodes. So of course you should have smile for your server status. Uh, a bit caution uh, about the support for Unicode in your database. Grafana support, this, but, uh, support it, but 
it, your database might not, so check it before. Uh, the third popular panel is the table panel. So this is a way to display time series as tabular data. And you can either display, uh, display them uh, with a timestamp per, uh, per row, or you can do aggregation per series. And you can do coloring with thresholds and so on. Uh, I think this also serves a good purpose in overview dashboards where you might want to get a last status of some series. Um, is it up, is it down, or something like that. Uh, a very powerful feature in Grafana is the templating feature, which allows you to add template variables, which you can control from uh, the dashboard. And by modifying them, you will uh, modify all the panel uh, queries at the same time. And you can also use all and uh, that kind of stuff to get all the queries. Uh, templating uh, has a few dis different types. First, there's the custom one, which uh, allows you to predefine values that you can uh, that you can then later replace in the queries. And uh, you can also have uh, queries that will send the queries in this case to Graphite asking for uh, server variables that you will find here. And you can have uh, template variables that depends on other template variables. And you can also have data sources as template variables, in which case you have to uh, specify which type of database and uh, Grafana will suggest uh, the, the data sources you have. This uh, makes it easy to have one Grafana for different environments so you can have production and test and staging in from one Grafana and reuse the dashboard. Uh, annotation is a way of highlighting events in the time series uh, and by default they are added to all the graphs uh, in a dashboard. You can give them uh, tags and you can also have links in the details. So if you want to link to some systems uh, uh, with more information with, uh, about deploys or something uh, happening to the system, it's really important to get that in the timeline as well, I think. A cool feature, which was one of my first big features in Grafana, is the playlist one. So you can create new playlists and then you can uh, add a um, dashboard to them, either by name, or you can use tags. And uh, then you save them, and when you start a playlist, you can either press one of these buttons, or you can go to a uh, URL like this. And since you can start a playlist from the URL, it's very easy to set up a smaller uh, computer like Raspberry or something back on a TV put it in the lobby, and then you can control the, whatever dashboards are shown in the lobby from, the, uh, from Grafana itself. Because every full cycle, it will load the uh, playlist from the data source again. This is a bunch of shortcuts. I don't think you see any one of them. Uh, the most important one is if you stand over a panel and press E, you go to edit mode directly instead of having to click the title which is super uh, nice for speed. You can also share dashboards. Uh, and um, if you have uh, internal uh, Grafana, you might want to share it publicly. And public Grafana instances means most of the case that anyone who can access the Grafana instance can access your time series database. And that's not a good idea, because it's kind of easy to overload a time series database. Um, so instead of hosting Grafana publicly, uh, you should uh, create snapshots with the data you want to show. Uh, GitLab had a maintenance problem last week and they did a really honorable way of uh, publishing a lot of data. Kudos to them. Uh, it was 
kind of sad to see that their Grafana servers went bonkers uh, in the same second they public, uh, published it. Uh, using uh, shared uh, snapshots instead would have um, been no problem. Because when you publish them, you can publish them to the Grafana instance you're currently running, or you can publish them to our Grafana, and we will publish them behind a CDN. Uh, in the latest version of Grafana, we also add a support for multi-tooltip. So if you en enable it and hover a Siri, you get a tooltip for every Siri. And this is also very nice when you want to debug stuff and you want to get a lot of data in the same dashboard and drill down. And whenever you zoom or changes, it will just follow. It's a little bit, it's a, it has a small performance impact, so you might not want to have it on by default, but it's only in your browser anyway. So we also recently added alerting, and that was um, it, it's been a really, really, really long-standing issue in Grafana. Um, we, I think this is our third iteration on alerting, and um, one of the first problems is that Grafana's data sources is in the front end, so we create the queries in JavaScript. With alerting, we can't do that because alerting has to run in the background. So we had a few different strategies for solving this, and the first we tried was to execute JavaScript in the Go backend, and we just said that we don't want to maintain this code. It's possible, but we don't want to maintain it, and it's complex and it's hairy. And we don't wanna, uh, want our alerting code to be uh, anyway, uh, in any way complex. So simplicity was really important for us, which meant that we have to re-implement all data sources in the back end, uh, which limits uh, plugins. So plugins cannot have alerting right now. We have uh, plans for adding plugin support in the back end in the future, because Golang uh, is going to release that soon. But it's not ready yet. But if you, uh, in, in, in the graph panel, you, you got a new uh, option for alerting. And if you decide to create an alert, uh, you get all these options. Otherwise, it's just a button asking you for create an alert. And the way it works is that you refer, refer to a metric query in the metrics tab. You give it a time range, five minutes to now. And you give it a reducer. And a reducer is a way to get uh, a final number from a time series. So in this case, we would uh, make, uh, uh, calculate the average of each, each time series returned by this query. And then we would compare it to this number. And then you can slide the threshold up and down and all that kind of nifty stuff. Whenever an alert is triggered, there's uh, a few different uh, alert notification channels. Slack, of course, which will uh, uh, take a screenshot of the graph where it's alerting. It will give, give you all the Siri names that uh, violated the threshold, and some uh, uh, alerting uh, descriptions and so on. And this is the model for the alert. So alert contains conditions, and this can be an array of conditions. And whenever one of these conditions are met, uh, or well, you can have uh, or statements or and statements. It depends on how you create your query. But if, this, if the result of uh, this somehow uh, triggers, we will send you an alert. It might be simple compared to other solutions, but we want it to be really simple. Our aim is not for 100% of all business cases. We really want to satisfy the beginner to medium complex users. Uh, Grafana.net, as I mentioned earlier, is our companion site. We're going to rename it Grafana.com eventually. Uh, I, the reasoning why we picked Grafana.net is strange even for us in hindsight. Uh, where you can list, uh, how can, you can find plugins, uh, both data sources and panels, and you can also find uh, dashboards. And a few, uh, a few plugins that I really like, 
are, uh, the first one is the world map, which allows you to map time series data to geo point, uh, geo point location or country codes. which can be kind of nice to see the, if you have multi data centers or you can see where customers are coming from or stuff like that. <coughs> the second favorite one is the diagram panel, which allows you to draw diagrams like this and connect uh, the boxes to a time series. So it's, it's not a weather map, but it's something more simple. And you create these diagrams uh, by uh, um, Markdown, not Markdown, but DSL uh, called Myrmid GS. And the last one is the custom uh, JSON data source, which allows you to integrate uh, any old legacy system to Grafana. It's, it's mainly a way for Grafana saying, sending away requests and expect uh, your custom uh, web app to respond with, date, uh, with time series. And the custom web app can also suggest queries and so on. Because there's always going to be some old system that you want to graph, uh, and you're never going to just have one system for monitoring. So this is a possibility to always keep moving and get everything into Grafana. Uh, dashboard was also introduced in uh, Trio, but uh, it's been growing steadily. Uh, so if you um, work on a project uh, like a Prometheus exporter or some framework work that exposes metrics, you can create a dashboard, upload it to Grafana Net, and others will see that and can download the dashboard from Grafana Net. And this makes it much, much, much easier to get started with your product. And uh, it's, it's uh, a way of sharing and con uh, contributing to open source without having to code in Grafana. Uh, if you want to import a dashboard, you just have to uh, click the import button. You can enter a URL to Grafana Net, and it will import it for you. And then you have to select some properties, like data sources and so on. And as I said earlier, sharing dashboards is a good, good way of uh, contrib contributing back to the community and making sure everyone can uh, consume and visualize metrics. This is our first poster we created for Grafana. Uh, and um, yeah, I, th I think just, uh, the, the, the dashboard uh, thing we added very much aligns with this, making everyone uh, able to view the met uh, dashboard the metrics. Uh, we also recently introdu introduced host to Grafana. It's still in beta, but if you're interested, come poke me afterwards, and I will hook you up. You just give it a name and the cloud will take care of the rest. So that's enough about the present state. Let's talk about the future. So the future contains four things that I want to mention. I don't want to give a clear roadmap because uh, so far we have been changing our goals a lot and that's our, still our goal to do because we always want to work on the thing that currently is the most powerful. So the first thing I know we're uh, going to do in the upcoming year is uh, iterate on alerting. Uh, we're going to add silencing, we're going to add uh, alert groups, uh, we don't support high availability right now or there's no clear way of doing that. That's something we want to solve. The second one is dashboard folders. So many people started using organizations for teams. That was never the intention of organizations. Organizations what meant for company uh, for hosting provider basically having different company using the same Grafana. Uh, by introducing dashboard folders, we hope to make it easier for people to have one uh, Grafana organization with different teams connected to one folder. And folders will also include permissions and so on, which all that kind of stuff that goes along with, uh, with uh, arranging and structuring uh, dashboards. The third one is uh, backend plugins. Right now we see a few different use cases. Uh, first is the alert notifications. We currently support eight, I think, but uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to support endless amounts. Uh, 
databases would also be great to have in the back end. So people can add the custom databases and have alerting on them really simply in Grafana. Um, authentication would also be a good uh, fit for plugins. And the fourth one is uh, automation. Uh, and that includes uh, dashboard revisioning, uh, some way of making sure that when this Grafana instance boots, it has these data sources, it has these dashboards, it has these users, etc., etc. We created the API for that use case, but that's a stateful solution. We want to add a um, um, configurable solution instead. Not sure how to do that yet, it's, uh, but we, that's something we really, really, really want to address without sacrificing startup speed. But yeah. That's about it for me. I also have a bunch of Grafana t-shirts uh, that I can't take back with me because I don't check language. And if you contributed to Grafana, I will give you a special one. So any questions? So, uh, <clears throat> uh, I have one question. If I want to implement a simple Grafana solution, say at my company we want to graph how long a certain process runs every day, mm -hmm. and I'm currently drowning in options with regards to time series database, uh, backends, and so on. What would I, what would I need? How, how should I, what would be a quick start to implement such a demo? So, the first thing I would suggest is to just get started with one time series database. If you can't decide, just pick one and get started. And once you see the value, you can pick the right one for you. It's because uh, I, I do agree, there's so many right now, it's hard to choose. Exactly, but just choose one and you'll get started, and then you will see the value. And then you can spend money, decide uh, time and money deciding which one suits your use case most. So, but is one that Grafana prefers? Or no, no. We, we support um, a, a lot of d different data sources, and all have all will um, uh, return time series numbers. So we will graph them all. No problem. <laughs> Hi. Um, my question is a little bit strange. Uh, I'm trying to integrate Grafana with basic authentication, um, basically hiding behind an internal server, and somehow the basic authentication is not picked up. Uh, I, 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 we can look at that afterwards instead. That's a kind of specific question, I, um, if, if that's okay for you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm, so, yeah, I'll, I'll stick around. I, 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 um, I can go uh, Very simple question. So uh, we've seen that uh, we can now import uh, dashboards. Ah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've seen that we can import dashboards as uh, JSON. Uh, is it possible now to export them to JSON without uploading them to? Uh... Yeah. Okay. You, either you can view your JSON or you can export them to the format for I importing. So you Thank can, you. so you can export them and you get a variable selection for data sources and so on. Yeah. Is there a plan to to allow uh, full text search? Is there a plan to allow full text search, like I would say in Kibana, so to support uh, um, Elasticsearch full text search engine? Uh, sorry, so uh, in Kibana, there, there is a free text uh, yeah. field, and it would be really uh, awesome to have that in Grafana. Is there a plan to have that? Yeah, that's something we've been considering, uh, but it's it's. Um, since panels are supposed to act on them uh, by themselves in Grafana, it's kind of tricky to introduce, but it would be possible. Yeah, and you could use template variables for that. 
You can just type whatever in the template variable. You can just type whatever. But there's not, there, 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 yeah. We should add a template variable just for that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Next question. Anyone on this side so have to go around? Yeah, I see him. This is going to be hard to get Uh, on the roadmap, you didn't mention uh, templating. Is there? Do you hear me? On the roadmap, you didn't mention templating, like uh, in, um, sorry, arrays as uh, template variables and stuff. Is that something you're looking at, or? Uh, sorry, I can't catch. There's some arrays as template variables. Um, I'm not sure, but tuple, uh, I, I, we've been thinking about adding tuples. So you can have uh, a hidden value and a display value. Is that what you're asking for? Something you're working on? Or not, 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 not yet. Not yet. Uh, no, the roadmap is uh, too wide for, for that feature. Any other questions? Anyone? Regarding the last question? Uh, I can show you how to do use uh, custom JSON for uh, the data, uh, the custom JSON data source for that. Because you can, yeah, sure, sure. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, uh, poke me via email, Slack, Twitter, some, some way, IRC, uh, Grafana, or something. Uh, for uh, alerting? Uh, when we would like to scale Grafana to multiple servers, how would uh, alerting work with that? Alerting on multiple servers? Like, uh, it, it happens in the back end and it runs on one server. So if we would run Grafana multiple servers behind the uh, proxy, would it... Oops. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, alerting across multiple servers for redundancy. So, if Grafana runs on multiple servers at the same time, would it generate alerts from those multiple servers, or how do you keep them in sync? And, uh, every server would generate uh, alert. You would have to uh, disable alerting on... Uh, you should only uh, enable alerting on one server, and that's the uh, HI, uh, HI issue that we want to address somehow. Any more questions? Yes, um, so basically, I wanted to use, um, I wanted to use the teams, uh, the organizations for teams. And the issue I run into is that um, data sources are not global, but per uh, per organization. So I made a patch to support global organizations, and I was actually working on getting it proper so I could do a pull request. Um, but you're probably not going to merge it because of the Folders, which you just spoke. Yeah, we, we don't intend to do uh, make organization uh, sharing in any way. Uh, so I should not uh, spend time in implementing it. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. Thanks. We have another question over here. So, do, uh, does your data need to reside always somewhere in a time series database, or can I build, for example, a dashboard? where a value comes from a, a, a REST API call at that moment yep. to watch like a website or a Twitter account or whatever? The way you would do that is uh, to implement uh, a custom application that re returns um, time series. That's the ah, easiest one. Okay. You could also create a plugin in Grafana that reads from any API. Uh, any other questions? We have time. This is really kind of nitpicking, <laughs> but is there, is there any way to, um, to, to get the playlist feature to wait with uh, displaying the new dashboard until it's fully rendered in the browser? No, not, not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Please file a feature request. <laughs> any other questions? That's a good feature request. Okay, going once. Oh, there's one on the end, again. Uh, 
for annotations, you said that they, uh, by default, are visible on all uh, panels. Can we turn it off? Uh, you can only enable it per, uh, for a per, per dashboard. Uh, we added support in the code to have it per panel, but that's not configurable or um, ready for merge yet. Uh, so in alerting, uh, it would only be per panel. So if you have alert for a graph panel and the alert triggers, we will create an annotation, and that would only be rendered in that panel. But so far, we haven't added the like UX support for working with the annotations that way. Any more questions? Going once. Going twice. Go on. Thank you, Carl. So the next talk is in 25 minutes.